Over in the pages of Marvel Comics, one of the biggest shakeups in recent years has been the X-Men's new home set in the nation state of Krakoa. On this island of Krakoa, all mutants would be able to live free. But in order to keep the peace, the X-Men needed to ensure that they had a governing body to watch over the mutants. They decided to name this governing body called the Quiet Council. However, on the Quiet Council, not every member maybe have, was, is aligned with some of Krakoa's values, as some supervillains were even seated on the council, like former supervillain Emma Frost, Exodus, and Mr. Sinister Nathaniel Essex himself. Little did the mutants know that Nathaniel Essex has been scheming something huge for the Marvel Universe and has just now pulled the trigger and decided to unleash uh, the final kind of steps here to Sins of Sinister. My name is Arico Braddock, and today let's go ahead and dive deep into Sins of Sinister number one to see just how far Nathaniel Essex's plans have come. But before we get deeper into the video, I want to go ahead and set up our uh, new issue of this series by reading off Marvel Comics solicitation text for Sins of Sinister number one. Powers of Essex. It's the end of the world as we know it, and at least Sinister feels fine. For now, can that last? Especially when we discover that he really is his own worst enemy. The Universe Melting X event begins here in a horror timeline that makes Age of Apocalypse look like the X-Men swimsuit special. Join Karen Gillan as he kicks off the X-Men crossover Sinister has been planning since the beginning and is going to have to see through to the bitter end. I want to introduce our creative team on the issue. This issue is written by Karen Gillan, um, illustrated by Lucas Wernick. We also have a number of guest, art, guest artists contributing to this story, including Jeffrey Shaw, Marco Cicchetto, Juan Jose Rip, David Baldion, Travel Foreman, Carlos Gomez, Federico Vicentini, David Lopez, Joshua Casara, and Stefano Caselli. Uh, the issue's colors are uh, uh, illustrated by Brian Valenza, and the letters are from VC's Clayton Cowles. Uh, the credits page and other kind of aspects of this issue have been designed by Jay Bowen in the, in the series. And also, last but not least, um, we have a cover art from, over from Lionel Francis Yu. I actually want to go ahead and show off the cover art for Sins of Sinister right now. Um, here's a look at the kind of cover from Lionel Yu. I love how this kind of cover itself teases all the various kind of concepts in Sins of Sinister. There's an incredible amount of characters, um, you know, spanning across like years and years of X-Men that this issue is setting up. So great to see uh, this cover about kind of so many aspects of the X-Men. And next up, I kind of want to show off, um, you know, some of the art here. I want to kick things off by talking um, a little bit about the art from Lucas Wernick. Big thanks to Adventures in Poor Taste for posting this preview of the issue so incredibly fast. And I just have to say here to start things off that Lucas Wernick is adept at drawing uh, Nathaniel Essex, Mr. Sinister himself. Uh, Wernick emotes uh, just so fantastically throughout this issue. I think a big part of the fun in Sins of Sinister is just watching uh, Nathaniel react to some of the, you know, designs of his own making, you know, watching various aspects of his plans get derailed and getting kind of that facial expression from, from Lucas Wernick really helped me enjoy the issue on an even deeper level than, you know, if another artist was contributing to this series. Also, I, I, I love, you know, when it's time to kind of invert, uh, you know, some of the familiar characters and bring out, you know, some of the sinister aspects of the book, uh, the way that these characters kind of conspire with each other and take joy through their kind of facial expressions is just so chilling and captivating uh, to read throughout the issue. Um, you know, just like the confident way that various X-Men characters like Emma Frost kind of undo all their like the, the 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 various aspects of characterization that they've been working towards um you know for such a long time is just one of the most like nightmarish um you know moments in the issue 
also the scene here with um, you know Ben Urich and uh, J. Jonah Jameson was another highlight in the issue that brought a surprising um, you know aspect of like the main X Men title that I really didn't expect to see here. But kind of throughout the entire script, over from Karen Gillan, I was really shocked at just how many kind of points in X Men history that this issue um, you know directly homages throughout the tale. I love, you know, kind of watching the 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 house of cards that Mr. Sinister has played, um, you know, start to fall over is just so captivating. Um, you know, the way that Mr. Sinister was kind of using those Moira clones to, um, you know, create this 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 horrific, um, you know, timeline causing all these terrible things to happen is just a beautiful tragedy to unfold here. There's been a couple teases at what kind of Storm's reaction, um, you know, to this whole thing would be. And I love that you know, Marvel kind of set aside so many big character moments in this issue, um, you know, particularly for Storm. But there's just so many little moments with other characters like Sebastian Shaw, Magic, um, you know, the Scarlet Witch. And I even like kind of like the teases at X-Men Red and Arico. Um, you know, that we got in this issue as well. I'm really just shocked by how many kind of like aspects of continuity are weaved into this story and how patiently it looked like, um, you know, writer Kieran Gillen and artist Lucas Wernick spent kind of sowing the seeds of this story without letting it kind of, um, you know, bloom in full until really like it's, it's towards the end of this chapter. Um, you know, when the issue opens, uh, Mr. Sinister has been thrown into the pit and watching him kind of scheme at some of his lowest points in the issue to kind of, you know, be on top of the world, able to evoke a panel like this in just a few years is just absolutely stunning, um, you know, to take a look at throughout the issue. I also really enjoyed the various guest artists here, including uh, Juan Jose Rip, as well as, um, you know, Stefano Caselli. Um, you know, th this is like a massive jam packed issue in getting the additional artists able to kind of render various aspects of this crossover was a really nice kind of feature of the issue to kind of set it apart from issues of Immortal X-Men because this is the same creative team for both kind of chapters of the title here. And yeah, take a look at this image. We kind of see, um, you know, Nathaniel being sent over to the pit in Krakoa. But again, you know, the, the plotting in this issue is, is very complicated. And even though we see kind of Mr. Sinister's meteoric rise throughout the issue, we also get a shocking look at how all of his plans could be potentially um, undone here. So I just think kind of the script in this issue is just so intricate and detailed. I think this is kind of some of the most airtight X-Men event scripting I've seen since, um, you know, the pages of Inferno over from uh, Jonathan Hickman. So I was incredibly happy with this first issue of Sins of Sinister. I love all of the political ramifications for Nathaniel as well as the rest of the Quiet Council. I love kind of the expressions on Mr. Sinister from uh, Lucas Wernick. I think there's so many kind of great moments where he's just reacting to kind of the various aspects of his life that are just coming undone. All of the reveals of characters who have been sort of sinisterized, for lack of a better word, are just kind of fascinating nuggets throughout the issue to kind of keep you interested. I want to know from you, were you as interested in this debut chapter for Sins of Sinister as I am? What are your thoughts on, you know, Nathaniel's plans and his manipulation of these mysterious Moira clones? Thank you guys so much for checking out the video, and we'll be back really soon with more excellent comic book content. Well, I hope to see you very soon. Bye.